Hi, betting experts, and now we're going to have a look at the final day, Friday, day four at the Cheltenham Festival, Gold Cup day, the ground drying out all the time. The weather has been unexpectedly calm this week. We were nearly heavy uh, on the opening day, but things have improved, and it's probably um, drying out to be nearer to good to soft, soft in places on the final day. We start off with a look at the Triumph Hurdle. Uh, at 1.30, over two miles, grade one, class one, four-year-olds only. A really interesting race. It's an unusual shape to the market um, with three horses all trained in the UK, all under four to one or four to one and under uh, at the moment. So it's less competitive on paper than usual. Uh, and the one I've liked for a long time is Goshen of Gary Moore. And encouragingly, the stable has hit form this week. They've had three winners so far um, in the last seven days after a quiet couple of months. Now, this one is an absolute monster. He's rated 80 on the flat, very progressive, winning over two miles at Nottingham in October on his final start uh, on the turf. He's made a really smooth transition to hurdling, heavily supported each time, sent off 11 to 4 on, 3 to 1 on, and 5 to 1 on, and he absolutely routed the field on each occasion, coming home miles clear. He was particularly impressive from the front at Ascot last time out on deep ground where he destroyed the field. Um, he's a relentless galloper. He has got a little bit still to learn about jumping. I don't think it'll be essential for him to lead, which is probably just as well with all mankind in the race, who's a very free-going sort and a big danger. Uh, he's really impressed so far in winning all of his starts over hurdles as well, despite being a bit of a fruit loop at home. He won't settle. He bolts. He's virtually unrideable when he first came to Dan Skelton from Michael Bell, but He's won at Warwick, Cheltenham and Chepstow so far and his latest run beating Cerberus in the Grade 1 in December is very good form. Um, he can improve but he is um, a bit of a lunatic and I wouldn't want to back him until I'd seen him get to the start without pulling his chance away. So Goshen for me, a confident selection. I'm not keen at all on the current favourite Solo who's trained by Paul Nichols and made a deeply impressive winning debut at Kempton in February when heavily supported. What I'll say is he could be anything, obviously, but he was gifted the absolute run of the race in a race where only two horses were in the market there. Fujimoto Fly, who was free, um, was the only one to attract support against him. And Fujimoto Fly was dropped out very free and didn't really get home. So I think so... No, got a complete solo trial on the lead there um, on pretty decent ground at Kempton on the flat track. Now, he could, he could only win and he was extremely impressive, clocked a good time and all the rest of it, but things panned out absolutely ideal, ideally there. Uh, this is a completely different test at a completely different track and I think Goshen has already achieved a lot more. Moving on to the 210, this is the Randox Health County handicap hurdle, grade three handicap, huge field, cracking race, eight to one the field this morning. Uh, the bookmakers understandably betting wide open. The two I like are CL Deneige of Willie Mullins, um, who's a progressive performer, only had four runs for Mullins since arriving from Cherel in France, has shaped really well each time and I really liked his run at Newbury in the Betfair hurdle when just touched off by Pick de Jorge in a bunch finish. If you watch the way um, he went through that race, travelled so strongly, like one miles ahead of him and then hit the front too soon and rather ran around all over the track on the run in at Newbury, just collared in the dying stride. He's got a big engine, obviously quirky, will need to be produced late but seems sure to go extremely close with drying ground very much in his favour. And the danger for me, Mohayed. Uh, Dan Skelton milks this race. He's won it with Chitty Bella and Mohayed in the last few years. Got a terrific record. He's aimed Mohayed at this race all winter. Um, he's had four runs, been out the back every run. In that time, his mark, mark has fallen 10 pounds, which is remarkably generous. He's now back three pounds below his last winning mark at Ascot in 2018. He won the county hurdle himself in 2018 uh, in a 24-runner field from Remelook at 33-1 to 1 under Bridget Andrews. Um, he's basically got a fantastic record at Cheltenham. If you scroll back through his runs, always run blinders at this track. Wasn't totally disgraced behind Chitty Bello in seventh last year when very much the second string behind that winner. And Mohayed is trained by a genius, has been brought along with this race in mind and should go extremely close. Moving on to the 250, this is the Albert Bartlett, a horse I've really liked all season, Harry Senior of Colin Tizard. Very strong on him. I think he's still a double-figure price this morning. Um, he's won two from five over hurdles. He was really impressive in seeing off the very well-backed 
King Roland at this track over two mile four last time out. A lot of things went wrong that day, but he still showed a remarkable turn of foot um, to get up up the hill and prove too strong for King Roland. Uh, that was a really true run race. I li liked the manner in which he extended up the hill and this longer trip will definitely see he's up to nearly three miles. He's going to be a brilliant chaser in time, Harry Senior, and I think he'll go really close this afternoon and he's a fair price. The main danger for me is Time Hill, another very progressive um, English train novice who's done nothing but improve. He's three from three over hurdles so far, winning at Chepstow, Cheltenham and Newbury. Uh, he landed the odds last time against the Cashel man in workmanlike style, very much looking like a step up to three mile would suit. And his win from Champagnewell at this track in November has worked out really well. He should go very close. But Harry Senior for me at the price is expected to relish a step up to three miles. The highlight on um, day four is the 3.30, the Magnus Cheltenham Gold Cup chase. We've dealt with this race elsewhere. To summarise, I'm very much against Santini. I think he's a slow jumper uh, who'll be found out in this race. And I suspect all the Irish horses will prove a lot stronger at the prices. I've always been very strong on Kenboy. You can probably get double figures for looking on the exchanges. Nine to one with William Hills this morning. I think that's an extremely fair price if he can put in a clean round of jumping he'll go really close and I thought Album Photo last year's winner was the main danger um, he was working like on his return but he should be 100% spot on for this and will relish conditions he's very much the one to beat as I say I'll bang against Santini win and place I don't fancy Clendazoba at all and Bristol de Maio well I think the ground's probably gone for him as well I think Ireland will finish one two three four and hopefully Ken Boy can do us a favour at a very fair price. The 4.10, not a betting race for me. The Fox Hunters, a terrific spectacle, a wonderful race to watch. Three mile two uh, for five-year-olds and upwards. A huge field. Um, I'm not keen at all on Hazel Hill, who looked like something was badly amiss when turned over. A very short price at Weatherby in February. The horse that won that race, Manila Rocker, I don't think achieved anything in winning that race. Both of those two I'm going to be bang against. The one I like is Bill Away who comes here on the upgrades is six to one this morning, trained by Willie Mullins. Uh, comes on here on the back of winning at Nace at the end of January. I think that's probably the best form on offer. Uh, and this one is lightly raced, only had uh, six runs under rules as an eight-year-old and there should be more improvement to come he should go really close I think he's favorite on form but as I say not a massive betting race for me the 450 the grand annual a horse I've been very strong on for a long time been a lot bigger price lisp so if you missed the prices um, he was 16 to 1 when we first put him up a few weeks ago he's now half that uh, but he's got plenty to recommend him um, only three runs over fence he's a very useful three-time winning hurdler uh, in the past three runs over fences this winter shaping really well at Warwick in a fast run race in November behind Torpillo they flew around that day and Lisp was extremely eye-catching then winning at Plumpton okay 13 to 2 on you might think it amounts to nothing but the second Flamager has been a prolific handicapper since it's really good form and his run at Doncaster in a grade two behind Mr Fisher is excellent form and he's shaped really well there he looks extremely well handicapped I think he's got standout claims with drying ground to suit with the main danger, perhaps chosen mate of Gordon Elliott, who's another one who comes here on the upgrade after just three runs over fences in Ireland, getting off the mark last time. And he should have a lot more to offer from a lenient looking mark. The finale of the week, if you've got any money or breath left, is the 5.30, the Martin Pipe Conditional Jockeys Handicap Hurdle, over two mile four, a class two for four-year-olds and upwards. A fantastic race. There looks to be a couple of plots from Ireland. JP McManus has Holds all the aces. The two I've liked for some time, I like the way you're thinking, and Front View, um, who have both been strong in the market in the past few weeks, which is very significant. Um, I like the way you're thinking. It's particularly interesting. Um, has only had a couple of runs since last August at Galway. But I think it's fair to say that he's been ridden with the future in mind, and his fifth of 25 uh, over Christmas at Leopardstown was particularly eye-catching. He's not been seen since. He's been laid out for the race. The money's come, and I think he'll go extremely close in a race where stakes are best kept to an absolute minimum in a huge field. Thanks for listening all week, betting experts.